When we do the transplant, we will do the cervix and the uterus, but not the fallopian tubes. The goal is to do something like in vitro fertilization on these women before the transplant, so we can know that they can uh, develop eggs and we can make embryos and then develop those embryos to a stage where we can transfer them back to the uterus. So while we do say that gestational carriers is, uh, is one option for such women, um, that may not be option for certain other women. And even following the principles of bioethics with complete patient autonomy, um, we, we, we can argue that there's a lot of things that are for and against uterine transplant. But if, if the whole process is handled in a way where the patient is completely aware of the risk benefits, and if there's expertise involved uh, in, the, in the institution that's providing this service, we do think and we hope that in the future this is going to become more and more common. Uh, we're hoping that in a decade or so this will become mainstream. As we move in the future, if this is something that becomes mainstream and if uh, all, all the issues are kind of dealt with and this is considered extremely safe, uh, we may even think that relative uterine factor infertilities, things like recurrent miscarriages, things like intrauterine adhesions or Asherman syndrome where you can't carry your pregnancy, or severe congenital anomalies of the uterus with, uh, with uh, a lot of uh, recurrent preterm labors, those patients may also in the future be candidates for such technology. But as of right now, where it's still in its infancy, I think we're going to limit this to patients with absolute uterine factor infertility.